Hello there, welcome back. Uh, today is gonna be martini glass day. And I found this in my cupboard. I knew I had them. Um, I just had to dig them out and I have a martini glass. And I, I started a few minutes ago and so a lot of people were saying that they had a black screen. So let me know if you can see everything because I restarted um, and I don't wanna keep going if you can't see anything. So give me the heads up if it's you can see or not. Okay, well I see a lot of waving, so I'll wave back. Um, hello, so you, I guess you can all see. All right, so, oh hi, Guy from Cafe Obercom. Whoops, I guess I could call you out. I miss you, I've been thinking about you. He has a coffee shop in my neighborhood that I love, and hello Renee, yes I'm back. Um, I missed you all very much. Uh, Sunday is sort of my day off, and hi Brad Parsons, and uh, hello to my sister, who shall re remain nameless because she likes to go undercover. I guess she's ashamed of her brother. She saw my focaccia I made this weekend on Instagram. No wonder. <laughs> um, oh great, you can see me. Thank you, cheers, I love you. I love you too, I miss you too, guy. I'm gonna start crying now because very emotional missing your friends while you're in confinement. Um, and actually yesterday I sort of had my little meltdown. Everybody's probably had one and uh, poor Roman was sort of the brunt of it, but um, he might have also been sort of egging me as well. So needed a little time out. So I took that and I don't believe in arguing because life's too short. And when you find somebody great, you just let that stuff go. So I let it go. He brought it up this morning, but I let it go. And he brought it up again. Anyway, so the martini glass, um, I was saying a little earlier, maybe we got blacked out, but this is sort of the square plate of the cocktail world. They're very popular in the 80s, 90s. It meant you were classy, um, you know, lots of martinis. Um, of course, the martini glass has been around longer than the square plate, but um, it became very popular because of the Cosmopolitan. Um, the Cosmopolitan, of course, was famous because of Sex in the City. Everybody on, Cosmo on Sex in the City drank Cosmos. Um, fun fact, I was at a book party a few years ago in New York, and Sarah Jessica Parker was there, and I was with Roman and Brad Parsons, who was watching along. And I said, and I was kind of scared because I don't, didn't want to go up to a celebrity, you know. She, she deserves her privacy. And I said, do you think it's okay just to say hello? And he goes, yeah, why not? She's, you know, she's supposed to be cool. Um, so I went up to her and, you know, usually you get in and you get out, you don't want to stand there and take up all their time. She was super nice. Um, she spent, she talked to us. She started talking. I said, well, man's from France and if you want to speak, you know, he speaks French, but he can understand. And she just started hugging him and saying, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I don't speak French and I love France and you're so cute. And she wouldn't leave. She was like holding on to him. <laughs> So I have all these pictures. I said, like, do you mind? And I didn't want to take a picture. I was like, do you mind if I take a picture? Because this is so special. So it was great. I have a picture of Sarah Jessica Parker and Roma. And it's one of my favorite pictures because they're both wonderful people. Um, I like her very much. Um, or at least from what I saw, from what I saw for, what I say, for five minutes that time I met her. <laughs> um, anyhow, a lot of people were talking about vodka drinks. Um, people, you know, uh, people were saying to me, well, you know, you're making a lot of gin drinks, how about vodka? And to me, vodka always, <clears throat> gin always tastes like vodka with flavor. Um, and I know that that probably sounds funny to some people, but generally that's what gin is. It's alcohol with juniper added and other flavors. Vodka is a pretty clear distillation. Hello, Elise. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> Um, vodka is a clear distillation and some say it doesn't have a lot of flavor. So certain companies like Absolute, um, other companies, there's probably other ones I'm not familiar with, Grey Goose, uh, decide to start flavoring them with citrus and chilies and jalapenos and probably chocolate and so forth and it became much more popular. But vodka martinis became popular, uh, gin martinis of course are popular. Um, <clears throat> Uh, vodka is not that popular in France, even though, um, and I started this, I hope I'm not repeating this because I started this video earlier and I had to restart, but um, vodka, uh, the Bloody Mary was actually invented in France because the bartender brought somebody, um, let me start that again, I was trying to figure out where I was. A Russian emigre bought a French, brought a French bartender some vodka 
and he didn't know what to do with it because he said this doesn't have any flavor. So he added tomato juice to it and all sorts of other stuff. And that became the bucket of blood. Um, over the years when they brought it to um, the States, um, they couldn't call it Bucket of Blood, so it was renamed the Bloody Mary. And Brian Bartels wrote a whole book about the Bloody Mary a couple of years ago, if you want to know more about it. Somebody um, just mentioned that in Russia, vodka is always flavored. Um, I've never been to Russia, but let me know if that's true or not, because the only vodkas I've seen were like Stolichanaya um, uh, from Russia. Um, so I don't know about other ones. Grey Goose, of course, is made in France. Um, this is an interesting vodka. Somebody told me, I'm not gonna get too into this, but that Polish vodkas were considered the best in the world. And somebody gave me this bottle of Chopin, or Chopin, <laughs> I don't know how you say it in uh, Polish, but it's rye vodka, so it's flavored with rye, uh, has sort of a matte-like finish, has a little bit of a smokiness at the end of it. In San Francisco, or in Oakland, I should say, St. George's makes a rye, a dark, darker rye gin that's very flavorful. However, for the uh, Cosmopolitan, I think you want something that's very clean. Uh, maybe if you have a citrus vodka, that's always, that's fine, but um, uh, Kasia is saying um, Polish vodka is the best. Yes, I do get the Y Borova, Y Borowa, Borova, however you pronounce it. Um, that's the vodka with the buffalo, blade of buffalo grass in it. And that's what I used to buy. I just don't drink a lot of vodka that much anymore. All that changed this weekend because I made a Cosmopolitan. I was like, I love this drink. A little bit of controversy because it's the internet. You can't do something without having controversy. Um, who invented the Cosmo? Um, allegedly, it was invented by Toby Cecchini and He's somebody who I know, and he's a great bartender who has Long Island Bar in Brooklyn. But he was working at the Odeon Bar in Manhattan in the 80s, and people wanted colorful drinks. They were ordering colorful drinks, pretty things, and he wanted to come up with something that was colorful but not sweet and not frilly. So he came up with the Cosmo. And there's a couple of other people that um, say, oh, I invented that. Um, and I was talking about this this morning with a friend who's a spirits writer. And I said, well, I think I know like six people that claim to have invented the, f the warm melting center chocolate cake. So um, somebody's just saying that their husband's having an affair with me or that, oh, my husband just came to the kitchen, asked me if I was having an affair with me. Oh, it's your, Mary, okay. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell Roman, he's not, he's not here right now. <laughs> Whoops, now I'm blushing. I forgot to turn the light on, so that's why I'm a little dark. Anyway, so the, so the Cosmopolitan was invented. It's a colorful drink, it's really good. It's not sweet, it deserves to come back. Um, so if you have these kind of glasses, I think you really need to use them. I have pretty glasses, I thought, you know what? The Cosmo needs to go in one of these. Um, of course, the Cosmopolitan also became very popular in cities like San Francisco, New York, especially gay bars because it was pink. So everybody loved the color. Um, and it's a, it is a great cocktail. Um, needs to come back. So I'm actually going to put up my little table here because I still haven't gone to the post office to get my what I think is my tripod that arrived by mail. Um, the line is th three blocks long. And I like you all very much, but I don't know if I can stand outside for an hour and a half or so and just wait for something, wait in line um, and try to avoid getting coronavirus. So um, I'm going to use my little table. So the Cosmopolitan, it's made in a cocktail shaker because it has lime juice in it. And this is called a Parisian cocktail shaker because it's hard to open. <laughs> Not just kidding. Because uh, it has one of these in it, which helps the ice break up. I've never found out why it's called a Parisian cocktail shaker, but I like it a lot. Um, this is a vintage one. It's heavy. It's nice to have a heavy cocktail shaker. Please don't fall. So the first thing we're gonna add is some vodka. So I'm gonna add one and a half ounces of vodka. And I put this recipe on my blog today, so it's there, so you don't need to think too much. Um, my, so my goal now is every time I have a guest, I wanna get the recipe on my blog before they come so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and add one and a half ounces of this to my shaker. A 
and the next thing is triple sec. Triple sec. Track it. Triple sec. <laughs> Do I have to start the whole video again? <laughs> triple sec is an orange liqueur. Originally, it was made um, from these kind of oranges called lahara, and uh, this kind of this, this dry curacao is made the original way with those kind of oranges, and it's really delicious. It's made in cognac. Um, Grand Marnier is another orange liqueur that's made with cognac. Um, it's, it's also not transparent. Um, this is kind of moderately not great quality triple sec, and I won't show the name. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. It's just, um, it's not that good. Um, if you put it in your drink, you won't really like your drink so much. Um, so I'm gonna use Cointreau, which is clear, and it's sort of the official uh, triple sec of Cosmos. So three quarters of an ounce is, three quarters of an ounce of this. And this does kind of make a difference, so it's good to use good orange liqueur. I was super fortunate because I've been buying groceries from this um, delivery service. It's really good. They have really good stuff. It's not crazy expensive. Um, they have interesting things once in a while. Um, they have cranberry juice. And when you go on this site, you have to kind of play roulette. Like if you put something in your pannier or your basket, it could be gone. So if, especially if it's something popular, um, like a, you know an artisanal butter or something, um, the cranberry juice they have in stock. It's always in stock. French people are not big cranberry juice drinkers. When I moved to France, you couldn't even get cranberry juice. I was doing a story for a magazine once, and I had somebody FedEx me a box of cranberries to uh, test recipes for. <laughs> anyway, so that's a half a ounce of cranberry juice cocktail. Whoops, that's a little too much. I don't like them too heavy on the fruit juice side. To me, a good Cosmo is sort of a strong cocktail, but it's tempered by the uh, cranberry juice cocktail and by the lime juice. It's not a fruit drink with a little bit of vodka in it. And that's my personal preference. Even if you go online and you lurch, search for Toby Cecchini or Cecchini, um, his Cosmo, every recipe that's in the articles about him is, is a little different, so. Um, and then a half an ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. Up. Oh. I was just wondering if you could see my underarm when I was doing that, so I'll hold my arm this way. It's probably not very pleasant. All right. Half ounce of lime juice. Some people use uh, Rose's lime juice or bottled lime juice. I'm not a fan of those things, so I don't use them, but if that's all you can get, I think you can use them. Um, I kind of prefer fresh. So I'm gonna grab some ice and I'll be right back. So did anybody else have a meltdown this weekend or anything? Um, I've been kind of watching the news and seeing all the protests about people wanting to um, not be in confinement anymore. And I don't know what to make of that because there's a virus going around. So it's very interesting. Okay, nobody had a meltdown this weekend. I'm gonna look at the comments. Turn on the light, you can wait. All right, I will. <laughs> All right, is that better? <laughs> All right. Uh, somebody also told me to get one of those selfie lights that makes you look glamorous. It's like a ring, uh, so um, I don't have one. Anyway. You want to shake it really cold. There's nothing worse than a not cold cocktail. And when Roman was on the show um, on Saturday, we talked about ice, and the French really don't like ice. And I'll never forget a friend of mine went to a party where they were serving mojitos in Paris and they were serving them at room temperature, not over ice. And I can't get over, I can't imagine what something like with. Uh, rum and mint and sugar syrup would taste like uh, a little warm. Uh, <laughs> okay. 
So chilled glass. One of the great, the easiest luxuries in life is to ch have a chilled cocktail glass. It's something anybody can do. Okay. Uh, and often when you put lime in shakers, it tends to clog the little things. So you could open up the shaker and just pour it through a strainer, um, which sometimes I do, maybe I'll do that. Just because I mentioned it. All right. Up. I also saw an interesting bartender confinement tip. If you don't have a lot of ice on hand, just reuse the ice that you use to use to shape the cocktail because you're not diluting, you will, you will be diluting the drink just like ice, but the, uh, um, the ice is not, um, how would you say? It, it's, it's sort of like, almost like having fresh ice again if you use it. So that's a confinement tip that I like. All right, so the last thing we're gonna add is a lime wedge. You're not gonna believe I spent all day preparing for this moment, but I'm still like, where is everything? So. <laughs> so, this is a cosmopolitan, my friends, and I love that color. It makes you wanna drink it, and it's fun. Uh, we've all been having sort of a, well, most of us, I think, have been having sort of a rough, uh, we're sort of hitting a wall every once in a while. So, when I had a cosmopolitan the other day, um, I, the first thing I said was, I want another one as soon as I'm done with this. Mmm. <laughs> I see, I forgot how good it was. Uh, mm. Mm. Wow, that's really good. It makes me uh, want to make more vodka drinks. When I was talking, I had Jeffrey Morgenthaler on, the legendary bartender and spirits writer the other, about a week ago. We were talking that day, and I said, you know, I remember like when I was, a, uh, when I was legal drinking age, but quite young, <laughs> sort of high school, college, I don't wanna, um, I don't wanna implicate myself. We drank a lot of screwdrivers and Cape Cotters. And it's like, someone needs to reinvent the Cape Cotter, the cranberry juice and vodka drink, because I bet you could do it really well. Mm. That's a wonderful thing. It's not too strong. You know, it's only got an ounce and a half of vodka and a little bit of triple sec. Uh, triple sec's not super strong. Um, but this is a great drink, and I'm very happy. So I hope you like Cosmopolitans. And once again, I put the recipe on my blog today. And I also put a really good recipe from my book, Drinking French, on there. With it. Um, it's the rosemary roasted nuts because they go really well with this cocktail. So go to my blog and check out the recipe for this and the recipe for the nuts as well. All right, well, I think that's it. Um, this week we've got some really interesting guests and I'm really happy to be back. Uh, I missed you all on Sunday and I thought I should just pop in and say hi. Um, I've got a distiller coming on a Wednesday and we're gonna film, I'm not sure where, because he said in the distillery with the copper, it's very hard to get a Wi-Fi connection. Um, and we're also gonna have uh, my good friend, Tim from Chartreuse come and talk to us about Chartreuse. And we're gonna ask him all sorts of questions. And I said, we're even gonna ask you the tough questions, like why is it expensive? Because everybody's asked, saying to me, oh, I wanna buy a bottle, but it's expensive. Um, I said, we. Okay, we'll talk about that too. So that's gonna be very interesting and he's super cool and open. Um, and I've got a great cocktail tomorrow night as well. And I'll try to squeeze Romain in again too. So um, I've got confit in the oven, a quick confit where you just put the legs in the oven at 300 degrees uh, Fahrenheit for about two and a half hours and you get these wonderful crispy pieces of duck, leg, duck confit. That recipe is also in Drinking French. But for right now, I'm drinking American with French liquors in it. Uh, I've got Polish vodka, I've got French uh, Cointreau, and cranberry juice, which I don't even know where this is from. Canada, from our friends in Canada. So it's French Canadian, <laughs> okay. 
All right, well, thanks for coming, and it was great to have you uh, join me again. Uh, well, I see some of you like the table. It makes it something for me to lean on so I can just spend uh, some time with you. But um, I don't want to keep you. You probably have other stuff to do, because I know for some of you it's early in the day. So tune in tomorrow at the same time, and I'll be back doing another cocktail. Um, it's going to have gin and dry vermouth in it, so that's a little clue. <laughs> and I might use these glasses because I'm sort of liking them, even though I, even though bartenders kind of, or not bartenders, but people in the bar community, I think, sort of, sort of poo-poo them, but I'm kind of liking it. Mm. All right, so I'll see you tomorrow, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.